The writer Maya Angelou once said, Have enough courage to trust love one more time and always one more time. Indeed, love isn't just the most beautiful feeling, but sometimes it can also be heartbreaking. So why do we keep falling in love, even after breaking up a terrible relationship? Does love at first sight really exist? How do we choose whom to love? And why can our feelings shift so easily, often turning the warmest emotions into hate, or even worse, indifference? The American poet Emily Dickinson once said that the heart want what it wants, but in reality the eminence grease of all this chaos is another organ within our body, our fascinating brain. Actually, the journey from a relation's first smile to its last tear can be explained not only by psychologists, but also by physiologists, neurobiologists working with our brain's neurons, and even anthropologists who claim that love was culturally and socially produced. Despite all the magic that movies, romantic stories and books, poets from Shakespeare to Remark, and dozen of well-known fairy tales have attributed to romantic love, this feeling is simply a hormonal process. So how does our brain manage to stir up such commotion? Yes, love at first sight exists, and it happens in milliseconds. However, this process might not be as romantic as you imagine. In fact, the trigger for love is our sexual attraction. It constantly urges us to seek all around for a new partner, for the one we will spend a lifetime with. And only after that comes sympathy. That allows us to sort people surrounding us. But how do we choose one person from a crowd of people? And why do those infamous butterflies appear? There are several different factors that could influence not only our physical attraction to other people, but also our feelings for them, whether it is love, disdain, or even hate. But in love, one of the most crucial is scent. Each cell in our body contains proteins known as histocompatibility complex. This complex, comprising a set of genes inherited from our parents, has thousands of variations. The greater the diversity of these proteins in our body, the stronger is our immune system. Nature and evolution ensured that subconsciously, we choose people with a different histocompatibility complex from ours. All of this, for the sake of making offspring hardier, we perceive this difference through the scent of someone's sweat. So the more we like a person's scent, the more compatible we are. When we've chosen the one and start feeling affection, our brain begins to release dopamine, serotonin, and adrenaline. These neurotransmitters make us perspire, find humor in the simplest things, and feel an overall sense of euphoria, akin to the behavior of infatuated teenagers irrespective of our age. These new emotions activate the same area of our brain as sweets or other food we love, as water when we are thirsty, and as other, way more extreme and addictive sources of satisfaction. We're constantly awaiting the next wave of pleasure, and that's why we're anticipating the next rendezvous with our beloved. Thanks to our cunning brain, which suppresses our critical thinking, at this stage, our partner seems perfect to us. So, it's crucial not to hurry during these few months while we're wearing bright hormonal pink-colored glasses. The next stage of love is attachment, which is an evolutionary mechanism allowing our children to have two parents. Hormones like oxytocin and vasopressin are now released, granting us feelings of calmness and trust towards our partner. That's why romantic love feels different at this stage, as these same hormones are responsible both for family bonds and close friendship relations. Gradually, our initial lack of judgment gives way to a more realistic understanding of our partner. This transition often marks the first significant challenge in a relationship as issues become more apparent. Unfortunately, breakups are not uncommon at this stage of relationships. The pain accompanying parting with a once loved one is entirely our brain's doing. The distress of a breakup activates a region that processes pain, so we start thinking about our ex-partner again, desiring new contact as the brain area that craves our sources of pleasure is activated again. At the same time, this emotional whirlwind activates our body's alarm system, leaving us feeling shaken and restless. Fortunately, over time, our brains start to work more rationally, and such things like physical activities, time spent with family and friends, or even just listening to favorite music can help us in this healing process. Ultimately, we let our last relationship go, giving place to the next chapter of our romantic adventures.